five. You left out that she was five. No, she was no, she was twelve. 12. Oh, you were twelve. Yeah. Pardon me. She was twelve. Um, but I don't know what I was going to say about the, about the case that um, yeah, I've forgotten now what the hell I was going to say. But anyway, because you interrupted I me. I know. It's my fault. But I guess about sharing it. Right. It'll come to me. Okay, so how did you guys feel uh -huh. when they said they told you they wanted to be actors, that they wanted to go into this very difficult profession? Well, can I just say that when the children were small, both of the children were small, Jeff and I would have a conversation that went something like this. Uh, do you want to go out tonight? Uh, maybe, but, oh, maybe we should just stay home and watch the kids. And what we meant by that was sit down, relax, pour a glass of wine, and the kids would totally entertain us. <laughs> from that both Paul and Inca, from a very early age, had better comic timing than us, and had a wild array of characters. We, you know, they, they were quite young, but both in a dead background, were beginning to feel rather humbled <laughs> by their gifts. <laughs> so. Even then. Yes. I know what I wanted to say, which was kind of neat, is that some of the plays <coughs> that I did, I repeated years later, and my kids played those, the parts. Oh, you know, I mean, they then played my, my, my daughters. You know, did it what you see. Oh, yeah. Re you know, recreating the <laughs> same part that they had experienced when they were little and watched me doing. They were now gonna play it again with me. I think that is, it's, I think it's an extraordinary um, opportunity. Opportunity, you know, to, to have. Perspective. Okay, let's uh, flip it over now and hear about the the kids. So tell us about Edwina. Oh, I'm going to tell you about Edwina. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, Edwina, I don't know that she'd ever recovered from that tour that, uh, that she was on with me. And she was 12 years old and we toured with Stratford Company all the way over Australia because, my goodness, that was an eye opener for you, wasn't it? Well, it was a wild tour. It was a wild tour, absolutely wild, and I was afraid that the actors were quite wild as well. So it wasn't, I think it was a bit shocking, wasn't it? For you. Even for a child who grew up in the theater. Even for the child who grew up in the theater. Because this was a different situation. It wasn't just you know, like part of the family. Now she was on a, on a tour with a whole bunch of crazy, <laughs> boozing actors carrying on like mad. And it was like, whoa! It was shocking. It wasn't it in way for you? <laughs> what did she go on to do? What did she, how is she expressing her creativity? Now? Well, I, she, um, I think she got, she got some bored with, 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 she didn't really want to be an actress. She really wanted to get to be uh, involved in film. And so she got involved in film and um, directed some film. And then she, and at the same time, she wanted to write. And that's what she is now, but she's also, also a producer. And she has gone back to the theater. We played. Um, just about two or three years ago, we were back on stage again. Um, but I would say that she's a writer and an award winning and filmmaker. She's fabulous. Yeah. Her, her film won an award at the LA Children's Film Festival. I know, and she's written a, a series that has me in it and she in it. My <laughs> other kids in it, the whole family. The whole family in it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you did good. You produced work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <coughs> let's hear about Ingo and Paul a little more. Paul, <coughs> uh, working backwards, um, Paul right now is awfully busy doing two shows back to back, really. The Child of Judas Iscariot. That's, is that right? Is that the last name of it? The Last Days of Judas Iscariot. Actually, I have trouble keeping up with uh, what the kids are doing. I can see that. Um, and then he's going to go on to work. And, and that company is called. Um, Birdland Theatre. Birdland Theatre, and uh, that's going to be on at the, um, uh, the distillery. And he's then going to work with uh, Theatre Columbus coming up. And he's had um, uh, the last two years, he was um, a, a character, a delightful character in a television series called Train 48. He played uh, Johnny McLaughlin. And uh, at the beginning, when Paul was an adolescent, he was wanted to um, save the world. He wanted to uh, rescue the world from everything that was polluting it and poisoning it. And if, um, if I remember rightly, he once said to me, and if, that, if I can't get a career in that, I can always fall back on being a garbage man or an actor. <laughs> 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 um, 
So anyway, Paul, uh, Paul did um, fall back on going into theatre school and um, uh, embraced it in a very natural way, which we all, we felt it was perfectly natural for Paul to be, to want to be a professional actor. I mean, he had, we knew he was gifted. And if honestly, as his mum, if I thought that he stunk, I would, I would have felt it was my duty to tell him, really. I mean, I didn't want, you know, him to embarrass himself in the business, but he was fantastic and I love it. Loved watching his work, and it was great fun playing his mum in that play at Targo. And with Inga, Inga from a very early age, she loved going to the theatre and being an audience. And Inga had a tremendous feeling of what an audience is, that part of the of the of, of the relationship, which I never did when I went into acting. I mean, she just, she, you know, she was living and breathing it from such an early age. And she, as a little kid, she was always producing shows, always <laughs> doing it, making it happen, play, you know, making music, sings like an angel. So when Inga went into theatre school, it was, um, it was very natural to see that again. It was just on a very natural evolution to see this happen. And um, she did uh, a couple of theatre shows when she was young, but um, Inga has been working a lot on the live stage as um, the, the lead singer in her own band called Battlestar, which actually Paul drums for, but um, has been, is doing a great deal of television, television work right now and uh, is uh, doing a huge range of roles and uh, we'll be seeing her soon in a new series in January called Jeff Limited for CTV. So um, it's been quite exciting. You know, I get terrified when they're out of work, but they haven't really been out of work that much. But my stomach's way more in a knot if my kids don't have work coming up than no. it's about me having work coming up. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that's a really, oh. you know, big thing that I feel. Yeah. But so far, so good. So far, so good. Okay, Adam Paul, what do you have to say? Oh. Well, I'll go back a little bit. Um, it, when they were really young, in a sense, we exploited them. Uh, we were doing a lot of touring uh, when they were too young to protest, I guess. <laughs> and so we hauled them along. Uh, when we did the farm show, there were three children in the company of six actors. Uh, Janet Amos had a son, Chris, who was two. Fina McDonald had a daughter, Arwen, who was one. We had her two. And we had a daughter, Severin, who was just turning one. Uh, we were in a farmhouse, and one of the things that I really remember about that was that we had to say goodbye to them every morning. Huge farewells. The kids would be hauled into the house, the mothers would run to the barn, which was like a hundred feet away. <laughs> and they'd have to stay there uh, for the whole rehearsal day so the kids wouldn't know that the, the mothers were that close. <laughs> But the, your exploitation thing had, uh, in a sense, I, we had to connect with the community. And the most relaxing element that the farm community had about us was the fact that we had children. They weren't quite sure who the fathers were or uh, you know, what was exactly going on in this house because we were pretty non-conforming. Then the show uh, kind of took off and we started touring and we were hosted in uh, various places and the building and family connections actually uh, really extended and made a, a very warm dynamic with the communities that we, uh, that we visited. Um, I actually remember looking at a letter from a farm lady in Essex this is not a hotbed of theater, even now. And he said, would the woman with the young daughter require her own bathroom? You know, <laughs> I mean, the, the, the concern that they had towards the one night visit that we were doing to that community was very, very interesting on that level. Yeah, well, I remember one story, I won't say what part it was, because you're not supposed to talk about that play, right? <laughs> I was playing that part, and I was going through a devastating time with it. Couldn't sleep, and I was. It was like one o'clock in the morning, and I was crying. And Severn piped up from the other room and said, "Mom, what's the matter?" And I said, "This is what happens when you act, and don't you forget it." <laughs> <laughs> and I said that to her. You know, when she took off acting, I said, "Do you remember that?" She said, "Yeah, but you got better." <laughs> Severin went to the theater school.
about it. And then she started acting at the Shaw Festival and doing all these 